Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the regularly scheduled Ways and Means Committee. Agent, uh, Ways and Means Committee. Uh, I am Council Member Abdul Samir, Chair of the Committee, and with me are Council Members Cunningham, Fletcher, Council Member Palmasano, and Vice President Jenkins. And we do have a quorum of our committee, and we, therefore we can dispense with our business today. Today on the consent agenda, we have 28 items for consideration, and. Um, these are as follows. Item number one is a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of Brandy Steiberg. Item number two is a legal settlement workers' compensation claim of John Ellen. Item number three is a legal settlement of claim of Abdi Hassan. Item number four is a legal settlement um, uh, Gregory Johnson versus City of Minneapolis and the City of Minneapolis and Minneapolis Professional Employees Association. Item num um, and item number four is being postponed to the March 24th, 2020 Ways and Means Agenda Meeting at the request of staff. Item number five is a legal settlement of Anthony Kelly versus Bernick et al. versus the City of Minneapolis. Item number six is the amicus st status, uh, stat status in lawsuit challenging federal administration climate action related policies. Item number seven is a lease of city owned land uh, bounded by second to third Avenue South and third to fourth Street South to stall construction company. Item number eight in the e easement agreement with Tangle Town Development LLC for shared driveway at 5400 and 5416 and 5426 Nicollet Avenue. Item number nine is a contract amendment with Wells Fargo Bank NA for banking services, um, bank accounts, checking, and related services. Item number 10 is the 2019 budget closing adjustments. Item number 11 is the Capital Long Range Improvement Committee click appointments and approving the council appointment of Devin Wise, seat 10. Ward 5 to fill an unexpired two-year term beginning January 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2020. Item number 12 is the 2020 Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. Um, item number 13 is a lease of termination agreement at 10 West Lake Street. Item number 14 is a gift acceptance from the Cleveland State University for Smart Cities Surveillance and uh, Privacy Conference. Item number 15 is a contract with B Fresh Productions LLC for Community Media Access Services to Manage Public Access Television. Item number 16 is a contract amendment with Minneapolis Public Housing Authority MPHA for Stable Homes, Stable Schools. Item number 17 is a contract amendment with Eli May for Loan Administration Software Services. Item number 18 is a contract application to the United States Department of Health and Human Services for the Strategic Prevention Framework Partnership for Success Grant. Item number 19 is the Minnesota Department of Health grant for Walkable Community Workshop Action Plan implementation at Glendale Townhomes. Item number 20 is a contract with the University of Minnesota Veterinary Medical Center for the Police K-9 Health Services. Item number 21 is a Women's Foundation of Minnesota grant for the expenses related to the testing of sex assault exam kits. Item number 22 is a Fuller South Residential Street Resurfacing Project approval and assessment. Item 23 is the 37th Avenue Northeast Street Resurfacing Project Approval and Assessment. Item number 24 is an Areaway Abandonment at 2303 Kennedy Street Northeast, 2330 Kennedy Street Northeast, and 2345 Kennedy Street Northeast Assessment. Item number 25 is a contract amendment with Egan uh, Companies, Inc. for Lemington and Half parking ramp lighting re retrofit project. Item number 26 is a cooperative construction agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for 3rd Avenue South Bridge uh, project, water main and traffic infrastructure. And item 27 is the joint powers agreement with Minnesota Department of Transportation for 3rd Avenue South project, traffic control and mitigation. And we have item number 28 is a staff purchasing a joint purchase report for November through December 2019 to 2020. And I move approval of all 28 items. And is there any discussions from my colleagues? Uh, Council Member Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I actually do have a question for um, item number 10 on the 2019 closing adjustments. Um, is there anyone here who can speak to that? I'm assuming. Mr. Ruff, but don't want to make that assumption. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Cunningham. 
Yeah, so um, I, I read in the RCA, but I just was hoping for some clarification so that we can have a thor more thorough understanding of the movie, the money being moved over from the contingency fund. Um, Mr. Chair, Councilmember Cunningham, there are three items. So regularly we, at the end of the year, move money into contingency as necessary. Um, <clears throat> The first dollar amount is directly related, primarily I should say, is related to s snow removal. 2019, especially earlier in 2019, was a very heavy year for public works in terms of uh, snow emergencies as well as the latter part of 2019. There are also some adjustments that we make that are both, um, that are related to smaller amounts of transportation improvements in public works. Um, the second one is related to a dollar amount identified for the public service area in the new building and um, improvements and technology, primarily technology associated with that, um, with that capital projects. And then the third one is really what I would call as a, as a finance and property services mea culpa. Um, we gave the mayor's office in a, uh, inaccurate forecasts on how much money they had left in their budget for the remainder of the year. And so they ended up hiring, for example, more interns than they probably otherwise would have if we would have said, this is how much money you have for the remainder of the year. So that, and um, I think in addition to that, I think you know we could have handled some of that with just some um, accounting adjustments, but we felt in full transparency, it's better to bring that in front of the committee and the council so that you can see how the budget's changed um, and that we just don't cover it through some journal entry, for example. So, No, I appreciate that very much. Um, so with the um, public works um, transfer, um, was that something that was taken in? Because I know we had talked in for the 2020 budget, taking into consideration um, the increase that was needed. It's just that's kind of a good chunk of money. So I was just curious about, um, I know that we talked about that during the 2020 budget. Um, was this what we were expecting, or is this something that we should also be taking into consideration when we go into the 2021 budget um, so we don't have to make it up on the back end? Um, Mr. Chair, Council Member Cunningham, um, I think it's our goal. I, mean, I think number one is, yes, we should take trend analysis, clearly, if over a several year period we are more and more paying for snow removal costs if we believe that climate change is leading to more particip precipitation um, whether it be rain or snow that that's something we should take into account i think um, we also know that we're a big enterprise and in any one year unexpected costs can pop up and so i think as a finance recommendation what we would likely say is we should just have a larger contingency generally to cover these types of costs, but not put it in one department, knowing that in one year we could have a lot less snow, but we, you know, for example, may have a health department emergency and it's more, it's more uh, prudent, I think, from a council decision-making process to be able to redeploy those funds where necessary. Thank you, that's really helpful. Mr. Chair, if I may ask one more question. Go ahead. Um, so for the $250,000, um, I'm just curious as to why that was determined as a priority other over other fund, you know, funds that are needed across the enterprise. What was the decision making process in order to decide that the $250,000 that was in the contingency fund should go towards this rather than other priorities? Right. Um, Mr. Chair, Council Member Cunningham, I think there are two factors. Um, one factor will go to the, the fact that when we were putting the mayor's budget together for the public service area, we had a, a bigger construction contingency than we do today. Okay? And so it was anticipated that some of those technology costs could be covered out of the construction contingency. We have run into some situations where the um, and I don't want to go into great detail, I'd certainly be willing to brief you on the current situation with some of the contractors um, where we have less certainty about that contingency at this point in time, and, be, and that certainty could take a while. It's not just going to be when the building opens, but it could go beyond that. And so we felt that it was wise then to just have an appropriation that allows us 
in the case that that contingency for legal reasons and other needs to be held over for a long period of time to be able to deploy again those resources for the things that are necessary for that building. So I, I anticipate everything's going to turn out fine in the end, but um, we have to be a little conservative when it comes to pro those projections. Thank you so much. I appreciate the, the transparency. Absolutely. No, I appreciate the, the questions. It's, it's what we're here for. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Councilmember Cunningham. Uh, Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, um, Chair Rosami. And I guess I have a question about three items on the agenda, starting with item number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to try to understand a little bit around this contract amendment with Wells Fargo. Um, I know one of the notes says that it is a relationship between debtor and creditor, not fiduciary. But if we can get a little more explanation on that, I just know that just recently the, the chair and another board member stepped down from Wells Fargo because of their mm -hmm. um, continued increasing um, misdoings, wrongdoings, racially charged um, mortgage relationships and all of these things. So I'm just trying to get an understanding of okay. the number one under item number nine. All right. Thank you very much, Council Vice President. And Go ahead. So. Mr. Chair, Council Member Jenkins, Brad Cousins with the City Attorney's Office, and I've worked with Finance and Property Services on negotiating this contract. Um, first off, this is a contract that has been the product of months of back and forth and negotiations. Um, for that specific item, we see that as a reflection of the de default uh, legal basis for the relationship between you and the bank that you have a deposit in. Um, it's not like an investment situation where somebody, an investor, is, has discretion as to what money to put where. In that instance, you have a fiduciary relationship where the investor has to put your interests first. This is a banking relationship where when you put money in a bank, you are the creditor, they are the debtor, they owe you that money back. And that's spelled out in the contract. So we, as part of the negotiation process, clarified subject to council approval that this is not a fiduciary relationship like you'd have with an investment advisor, but the typical relationship that you would have with a bank where they owe you the money back that you deposit in the bank. Does that answer your question? Um, that helps to some extent. How do we determine um, that we as a city of Minneapolis are going to um, receive fair and um, honest relationship? Is there any kinds of um, uh, protections or clauses that protect the city from some of the um, items, the issues that Wells Fargo has been accused of and has admitted to in the past? In terms of the overall relationship with the bank and the choice of Wells Fargo, I would defer to Finance and Property Services. In terms of the contract clauses, I can tell you that we negotiated specific contract clauses to address the items that, that have been the subject of investigations over the past couple of years. For instance, specific clauses stating that uh, the bank cannot open sub-accounts without our authorization. Uh, because that was an issue, or at least an alleged issue in the investigations. Mm -hmm. um, so months of negotiation, if we had come to you with the contract as it was originally proposed to us by Wells Fargo, the list of things we wanted to put you on notice about would have taken five or six pages. Um, we've narrowed it down to two that we feel that um, reflect the typical kind of relationship between a bank and a depositor and that the city is able to manage. Uh, if the department wants to speak more generally to the relationship with the bank, I'm happy to defer to them on that and answer any other contract questions that you'll have uh, as appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connors. Mr. Chair, Council Vice President, um, the components of the memorandum of understanding in addition to the contract that we have with Wells Fargo are that to address your question specifically mm -hmm. is we can request Wells Fargo to make an appearance in front of this committee 
and you can ask those questions directly of your concerns. And those are on a periodic basis. Off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly, but it was at least annually. It might even been semi-annually that we had that. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, um, I think that is this is a um, minimum three-year contract. So at and we would want at least a year notice before we would change vendors in the future. And so I think we will continue to be in conversation with all of our elected officials as to your satisfaction with this vendor. And if in two years you decide that there is not an improvement to your standards or a code of conduct that you think is um, not appropriate for one of our vendors, given all the other factors, then we can go out for another request for proposals in two years. And so I think that's how we set up the relationship so that it's not a long period of time before you have a chance to reevaluate it. No, thank you. That's helpful. I just I know that they, the bank is being called into federal um, investigations currently as we speak. And um, I mean, it is kind of concerning when your board chair steps down um, and, and we are continuously in these contracts. Um, with this institution, um, but I appreciate the um, the explanations. Thank you so much. Then, uh, Mr. Chair, yep. if I may, I was just I'm kind of curious as to item number 14. There's a gift acceptance for Cleveland State University Smart City Surveillance and Privacy Conference, but it doesn't in indicate who is from the city, what department, or what entity is going to attend this conference. Thank you. I think our budget director, Michael Intermo, has an answer to that. Uh, Mr. Chair and Council Vice President, my memory from agenda setting was that this is the uh, IT department is mm -hmm. traveling to this conference. Yep. Thank you very much. And uh, Council Member Palmasano. If I may, this came through Enterprise Committee, so it's mm -hmm. actually just travel for J.P. Heisel from our IT department to attend this conference. Um, the other, yeah, I mean, our IT person uh, department did come. I did ask them questions at enterprise agenda setting, and um, I was comfortable with that. So it did go through enterprise, and I'm happy to connect um, the council vice president to the person in that department that would mm -hmm. be appropriate. No, that's great. I just was curious which department, um, I mean, data privacy and facial recognition and all of these kinds of surveillance tools are a really big issue. Um, but I wanted to understand who from the city was going to be attending that. And then just wanted to comment on item number 15, um, mm -hmm. that um, there's been a, a new contract for uh, public access television. And just, you know, we've been sort of, MTN has existed for a long period of time, and now there's a new contract. Um, I'm just curious what this contract entails and what we are expecting from the, the new entity, B Fresh Productions. Thank you very much. And we have a communication director here, too. Which is all women, I would um, mm -hmm. Not comment full. on. <laughs> Not fully, but uh, uh, we are heavier with, with women in communications department. Thank you, Chair Warsami and Council Vice President. Um, we are still in the process of negotiating the contract with Fresh Productions. Mm -hmm. It is modeled on the MTN contract, so we started with that contract as the base and are just kind of working through that contract right now with Fresh. Um, we are using a lot of recommendations from the, um, the summer, summer work group um, that was put together because we really believe that this is a key opportunity for the city to evolve um, into really community media and, and taking into context, you know, the, the digital landscape, um, the ever increased um, interest in community engagement um, and individual um, productions. And so ultimately, um, we are working on a set of metrics um, that we will hold um, Be Fresh Productions to accountable on a quarterly basis as we do right now um, with MTN. And um, so that that is um, in process of being concluded and then would be coming forward at that point. So would they be 
sort of creating their own content or just being accessible for community members to create? It, it is public content. access, so it is for community members to create their own content, mm -hmm. whether that's shows, um, content out in their community, and for Be Fresh to run our um, public access channels. So basically to take that content and to put that on as programming for the public to view. So it's really not the city developing the content or um, providing that content or frankly having um, uh, kind of, we have governance over um, uh, our points within the contract um, and deliverables, but not the actual content. That is owned by the public, owned by the producers themselves. And then they do um, produce and air city related content, council meetings, um, city announcements, et cetera, is that? Chair true? Warsami, Council Vice President, actually um, we and, and CJ Harrison from our video services um, uh, department or division within communications, we actually operate our government access channels. So the channel right now carrying this committee hearing, mm -hmm. um, public access is separate um, as is educational access, which is you know Minneapolis public schools. So it really provides um, a forum for the public themselves to decide and produce and create and then have aired that content on the public access channels. Um, and so that's been around for 30 some years mm -hmm. or so. Um, and so it's really important to, to protect that public space and that public voice um, so that um, community members can decide for themselves what types of content um, they're interested in, their neighborhoods are interested in, and to have a place where that is broadcast um, for all who choose to tune in. And then our channels are separate. Thank you, that's very helpful for me and, and likely for our viewers who may be watching. So thank you very much. Can be confusing for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, any other questions? Um, seeing none, I move items, I move approval items one through to uh, 28 for approval with postponement of item number four to the March 24th, 2020 Ways and Means Committee meeting. All those in approval say aye. Aye. Those against, items have been approved. and. Before we conclude our business, next, my, colleagues, uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Palmasano, has asked me for a brief moment to make an an announcement regarding a council matter not on this community uh, committee agenda. Go ahead, Council Member Palmasano. Thank you, Chair Warsami. Um, I just wanted to mention that something I regret did not make it onto today's Ways and Means agenda, but I believe truly should be moving forward is the COPS grant application for a traffic safety unit. Had it moved forward, it would be on this consent agenda right now. Um, and to that end, I've been having a whole lot of conversations, um, first with constituents, with residents of our city, and getting reached out to by a large number of people who truly felt we got that wrong in not sending in an application to um, the DOJ for funding for additional officers. Also with our partners, um, in conversation with our colleagues in St. Paul, even yesterday at a function with Governor Walls about how we must not abandon but work with our police departments across the state to modernize policing across our country. Um, and by my, with my own colleagues right here at City Hall, I've been in heavy conversation with a lot of my colleagues and I have to say I feel that we have a bit of a change of heart for some and others just in general that really wanted to weigh in on this matter. Um, my colleague Andrew Johnson is representing us at National League of Cities in Washington DC right now but he and I even last week were discussing whether we could bring this back to a different committee in talking with our city clerk and our city clerk's office, that is really not advisable for several reasons. Um, not Council Member Johnson nor I should do that. It's not subject matter appropriate. Um, and as, and as, as an aside, our beloved city clerk, Casey Carl, would lose his mind if we did that and went around normal procedures and appropriate procedures. Um, but I do see a path where we can proceed all together, and I do find a lot of support from my colleagues, um, not necessarily on public safety or not only on public safety, that really want to weigh in. So I don't have um, a motion finalized for Friday's council meeting, but I did just want to share openly that um, I really want to invite all of my colleagues in. I think we can find a way to move forward with approving that application on Friday. I'd like to find a way to move forward. 
Some ideas have included staff directions. Obviously, many ideas include interest in making absolutely sure that the robust work group on Vision Zero is going smoothly and that all the many things that Councilmember Cunningham asked it to do last December are happening. I think maybe some of the hesitation shown at the Public Safety Committee last week is that those meetings haven't really yet begun and we're all really eager to start moving forward on that. Um, I think public updates on that might be appropriate for a future subject appropriate committee and that would give everyone more comfort. Um, there's also our staffing study, you know, another robust but funded third party review that we're undertaking. So I will, when I have one, I will be happy to share a motion that I think could allow our full council to get this back on track as early as this week. Um, but I just wanted to mention that because in my mind this should have moved forward and been on the consent agenda today. So thank you for allowing me that time. All right. Thank you very much. Um, any other discussions? Okay. Seeing none, we are adjourned.